Hello, everyone. I'm Katie Earle, coordinator of the University Express program, and we're back for another interview. We're here with Rob Kubiak. Welcome, Rob. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Let's jump right into the questions because I'm actually really interested to know what got you into your field? What got me into my field? Okay, how far back do we want to go? Let me see. When I was in kindergarten, I knew <laughs> no. Um, so just a little bit of background about myself. I, I've worked in marketing and public relations uh, for my professional career. Um, and I think, but, you know, someone had asked me this question uh, before and they're like, well, you know, like what, and what, why do you do what you do? And I think that the biggest thing for me, at least is just that intrinsic feeling of, um, of positive um, contributions to society by help, helping people. And so when I think about from a marketing and public relations perspective, there's certainly a lot of strategy and, and things that, that go into successful marketing and, and, and PR and communication in general. Uh, the area that I really kind of gravitated to was the, the creative problem solving process and what that entails. So probably, I don't even know, 10, 12 years ago, I had a friend that went through this um, um, program at, at Buffalo State College and it, and it was the international, it's through the International Center for the Studies and Creativity. And that sounds like a mouthful. And so actually I just happened to find out over the weekend that they are rebranding themselves at Buffalo State. And I think they're they're calling it um, the Center for Applied Imagination, which sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but the program itself at Buffalo State and, and the reason why I'm kind of it, it, it relates to some of the presentations that I've done in the past with respect to creativity is that we know that um, through studies, um, through research, you know, it comes back that everyone really hasn't has it in them to be creative. You may not necessarily know it. Uh, you may not necessarily agree with it, but innately we are creative beings. And so it doesn't matter whether you are trying to, um, whether you're baking a cake, whether you're painting something or whether you're doing creative accounting. Um, if you do creative accounting for your full time job, I would question that. But, um, but in in general, though, we are we are creative, um, you, you know, beings. And so, I've I've kind of taken that some of that study, some of that research that I learned, and try to figure out how does it apply to different people that I know. Um, and so, my mom. Um, She's uh, she's 79 um, and, you know, my mother in law is, is, I think, is, is 80 years old. And so 1 of the things that um, I've talked about with them in the past is, you know, how they're able to, if they wanted to do something, they don't necessarily know which way to start. I've talked to them a little bit about creative problem solving and what that means. And, and so, um, so that's kind of the reasons why, you know, I, I think just, it boils down to, I'm just. I just want to help people. I want to share knowledge. Um, and one of the things that over the course of my career is I've taken different assessments, you know, that indicate here's who you are. Here's how you best communicate with others. Here are your top five strengths. And here is, um, you know, how you interact with individuals in different types of settings. And I go back to um, an assessment that I took geez, probably, you know, a few years back, and it was called Strengths Finders. And the idea behind Strengths Finders is that you take this online assessment, you answer some questions, and at the end of it, um, it'll tell you out of 33 or 34 different character traits or strengths, here are your top five. And so mine were, um, you know, ideation was, was up there, strategic, uh, learner, uh, competition and, um, and I think there's one more. I can't really think of it right now, but I like to learn. I like to share knowledge. Um, I like to communicate in general. I just, I'm, I, I guess I'm more of a people person. And so that's a long winded answer to your question. 
So I'll, I'll take the next question. <laughs> no, I love hearing about that journey and what got you into that. That's so interesting. And it's a natural pairing with your strength. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a, um, you know, it's something, yeah, like I said, I, I've, I've got a lot of different interests. Um, I've done some, some course. I think the first course that I taught um, as part of University Express was around the health benefits of reading. And mm -hmm. I think that goes back to my desire to, you know, learn and, and, and then try to take what I learned and share it with others because, um, you know, the, I, I delivered that presentation as the president of the Buffalo Men's Book Club, which we're still going strong. This is our 11th year or the start of our start of our 12th year, I think. And, you know, we've read 80 plus books along the way, um, a mix of fiction, a mix of nonfiction. But everything, you know, starts to interconnect. I think the older that you get, the more experience that you have, you start to see patterns. Um, in things, whether it's in your daily interactions, whether it's in something that you read, something that you watch, something that you listen to. Um, and, and so it's, um, it makes you, for me personally, um, being able to draw back on those experiences and then, you know, and share them. It's, it's, um, it's what I like to do. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that those classes were really valuable and the class about what to do with all the time now that I'm retired. Where you had people doing the mind mapping and all of that. That's just so fascinating. If you want to touch on mind mapping for a second, I think folks would like to hear about it. Sure. Yeah. So if you're listening, if you've made it this far in the interview, um, <laughs> I would say, you know, one of the concepts that I've uh, I've talked about in some of my classes was the idea of mind mapping. And um, just as you would look at a road atlas, um, to figure out the best way to get from Buffalo, New York to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, you, you know, there's, um, and then there's a, a lot of different ways that you can get there. And so, uh, similar to a roadmap, a mind map is basically taking a central concept that you're trying to solve or generate ideas for, you know, put that on the center of a page and then start to almost create like some spider webs, some maps that are all are related to that central concept, but things that you have to do in order to achieve whatever it is that you're setting out to do. So if your goal is to travel more, um, you know, you might put in the middle of a mind map, you know, take a trip. Okay, well, what's the first thing you got to do when you take a trip? You've got to figure out how you're going to pay for it. So you draw a line and that you it might say budget. And if you know, you, you might draw another line off of that that says fundraising, or it might say savings account, or it might say IRA, you know, like different ways that you could fund that trip. Once you figure out how you're gonna pay for it, another big line might say, Where am I gonna go? Is it gonna be is it gonna be by land? Is it gonna be by rail? Is it gonna be by sea? Um, and so it's just taking a look overall at what you're trying to do and kind of creating these intersecting lines that helps you achieve what it is that you're setting out to do. So mind mapping is just one of the tools in the creative problem solving toolkit that, um, you know, that I talk about a little bit during my classes and, and there's certainly others as well, but um that's a little bit about what what mind map is it's just taking everything in your mind all the levels of up and down and craziness that's going on in your world today and documenting it because that's half the challenge is to actually get everything that's in here onto a page so that you can kind of declutter your mind a little bit mm -hmm. i think that's a really powerful visual too for people to see yeah, yeah, it's and I, I don't know if I, I don't I don't have a mind map ready, but um, it's it's one of the things that uh, you know that I could certainly I wonder you know I could probably just draw it. So next question, while I while I draw my mind map here. Well, I'm wondering what gets you in the creative mood or what makes you feel creative. So the specific thing you do. Oh, is there a specific thing that I do that gets me? Um, 
Well, that's a great question. I think that the source of creativity or what gets me in the mood, it can come from a variety of different sources. I don't think there's necessarily one single area that I could say uh, gets me, gets the creative juices flowing. I think that um, sometimes just the energy of the people that you are surrounded by helps to inspire some creativity. So uh, one of the things that I've learned along the way is that, you know, you yourself are a reflection of the five people that are closest to you. And so do you want to be in that particular tribe that you're in right now? Or are they, are those five groups, are those five people, are they bringing you up or are they, or are they holding you back? And so for me, I want to make sure that I'm surrounded by people that are positive, um, that are, um, you know, that are interested in my well being, that are moving forward, that are thinking about the future, that are, while they're thinking about the future, they're also living in the present. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to necessarily be in a, in a tribe that just brings you down. And you've, I think everyone has people in their lives that, um, are like that, but, and who knows, maybe you're the source of inspiration for those people in some way. So, um, but I think from the creativity standpoint, being able to um, feed off the energy of others to, to generate different thoughts and ideas and concepts and things like that. I mean, there's, I really am fortunate, really blessed to have some really great people in my life, some friends and some family members and and, you know, whenever we get together, I think part of it, too, is just being um, open and honest as far as, you know, what your heart is saying and, and letting others um, also know that it's okay to be vulnerable and to be accepting and to share feelings. And so uh, I think being part of a group like that is, is a source of creative inspiration. I think it could come from something that you read. I think it could come from something that you're listening to. It could come from music or creativity can be um, initiated through through watching a movie. I mean, um, you might be inspired to start running if you watched Forrest Gump. I don't know. Like, I think that, uh, you know, so so the source of creativity and inspiration can, you know, it can come from just about anywhere. But for me personally, I would think that Primarily, it's from the people that I that I interact with on a day to day basis. If if they're positive and if positive, and if they're coming up with new and fresh ideas, um, that's that's how I feed off of them. So that's huge. I yeah. agree with you. The people who you surround yourself with are so important to your mood, to your success, to everything. So I'm I'm really glad that you brought that up. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. So um, let's see what else I've, I think I've done a few different presentations over the course of my um, great tenure at university express, which by the way, phenomenal job, Katie, with everything that you do. I'll always say that um, we've done, uh, we've done the health benefits of reading. We've done using creative problem solving to help uh, plan your retirement or things that you want to do. Um, we've talked about the principles of persuasion. Um, we've also talked about goal setting. So um, it's kind of a wide range of, of topics, um, but those are all areas that I have a little bit of background about and I have a genuine interest in those. So I like to share those um, tidbits of knowledge. And hopefully inspire others to take some positive action in their lives. I think you do, and we appreciate you. Mm, Next try. question. Oh. <laughs> what is something you're trying to accomplish right now? What is something that I'm trying to accomplish right now? Um, well, at this present moment, um, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm very involved with my church. And so um, one of the things that we're trying to do, obviously this past year has been a real challenge with, uh, with the pandemic. Um, and for a lot of people, especially our older adult population uh, that feel isolated and, and not able to get out as much, 
um, what we're doing as a as a church family, as a parish family, is to make outreach phone calls to all of our parishioners just to check in, see how they're doing, uh, provide some updates, offer some encouragement, offer some prayers, whatever the case might be, identify what their needs, what their challenges are. And so, um, you know, the church that I'm part of uh, is, is St. John Vianney uh, Parish in Orchard Park. Um, we have over 2,000 families. And so I've kind of taken a bit of a leadership role. There's many other people involved in it, though, but we're, we're, we've got a list of like 2,000 names that we're trying to, to wow. contact over the course of the next 30 to 60 days, whatever the case might be. And so, so that's a goal. Like, that's something that I'm trying to push through and make sure that, that, that we get, uh, that we get done. Um, and that involves other people, of course, but for a personal, from a personal standpoint, uh, one of the things that I'd love to do, I'd really love to try to get it done. I don't know when, but I just have to try to get it done is I'd like to write. I'd like to write more. Um, and who knows, like maybe over the course of time, it could, it could lead to something else, but I think just you know, like journaling and writing, um, and who knows where it could lead? I don't know. Um, but I, you know, I've got an interesting background too. And so I'd like to maybe share that background and with others. And I don't know, that's just kind of something, I guess, that's on my mind. Wow. Well, first of all, the goal for the church sounds really wonderful. I'm sure those people really appreciate those phone calls. And second, that's so exciting. Even the prospect of writing something, no matter who reads it, like that's awesome. Yeah, no, thanks. I, uh, you know, the one thing too, I'll, I'll draw back to what I'm wearing right here is, is the name Compeer. So Compeer is an organization that I work with or that I work for right now as the director of marketing and public relations. And what it is, is we're, uh, Compeer is a non-clinical social service agency that promotes positive mental wellness. That's done through one-to-one -one friendships. Uh, we also do mental health education, mental health first aid. We do some school-based mentoring programs. Uh, we also do group activities, but it's all dedicated around positive mental wellness. And so the volunteers that we match with our, with our participants, um, it's the goal of starting a friendship. And so, what I found, and, and I just coming up on a year period, is that I started three weeks into the pandemic. And so um, I didn't even set foot in an office until sometime in June or July. And um, one of the things, though, that we talk about is just the fact of isolation and and that impact that it has on mental um on mental wellness. And so, um, you know, going back to, it's not just from a church standpoint, but one of the things that one of the hashtags that we use for comp here is check on your friends. And it's just so critically important. Um, and it's not just friends, but it's family members too, that if you haven't heard from someone in some time, you know, pick up the phone and, and give them a call. If you don't want to call, pick up your phone and send a text message. Just let know, let people know that you're out there, that you're, you care for them. Um, and also the other thing, other side of the coin is don't be afraid to ask for help too. Um, you know, uh, and unfortunately one of the devastating effects that we have with COVID is um, uh, higher rate rates of suicide and things like that. And, um, it's uh, it's horrible. And so I think that um, don't be afraid to check on your friends, because if you have a vulnerable friend that is lonely and is isolated, you know, it's important to check in on them. And then once again, if you are a person that is feeling lonely and isolated, don't be afraid to ask for help, um, whether that's through Erie County itself, uh, through different hotlines um, or through an organization like Compure. I mean, there's we'll you know, there's help out there. There's people that are there that can help. There's people that care. Um, and so, you know, I, I think just the world 
itself would, you know, it would be a much better place if we just, if there was more caring involved. And so, um, you know, I think that what you're doing, uh, and this isn't just another plug for Erie County and the Department of Senior Services and Katie Earl, but um, what you're doing um, to offer some type of engagement for uh, this extremely important uh, population is is just great. So, thank you, Rob, and thank yeah. you for bringing that up because coming up on a year of this, it's so surreal, and you're so right. And connections are crucial. So I'm I'm really glad you mentioned that. Yeah. And just help us out there. Mm -hmm. um, so the last question I have for you, and if you've made it this far into the interview, <laughs> <laughs> what is one fact about yourself that no one really knows that you're willing to share? Oh, what is one fact about myself that no one really knows that I want to share? I want to share. Can I share two things? Of course. One is something that no, not many people know. The other is something that maybe our my friends and some my some family knows. Um, the first one is back in two thousand and one, I fractured my, my C one and C four vertebrae playing ice hockey, and so I was like a fraction fraction of an inch from um, not being able to conduct this interview. Um, it was it was very uh, so. So sometimes when I'm turning, I might turn with my whole upper torso to the left or to the right because I actually had surgery to fuse my C1 and C2 vertebrae. So that's just a little known fact about myself. Um, and the other one is that I'm a huge, huge, huge Neil Diamond fan. I love <laughs> Neil Diamond. I love him. Yeah, you know, like yeah, my my mom and my brothers, my brother listened to him growing up. And I've been to probably, I don't know, four or five concerts over the years. Unfortunately, Neil uh stopped touring, I think, last year, uh, because he I think he was coming down with Parkinson's, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I love Neil Diamond. I can sing, try to sing a lot of his songs. So that's another fact about Rob Kubiak. Wow, I love them. Picturing you singing all over the house, some Neil Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the other thing too is that my wife is a big Neil Diamond fan, so it's it all worked out. It all worked out. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rob, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. And folks, stay tuned to see what he's going to be offering for us in the spring. You should know within a month or so. We'll find out. But, Rob, thank you, and everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Katie. I really appreciate it.